Hello. Uh, my name is Kelly Sherman Conroy. My Lakota name is Mato Washte Winyong, which means good bear woman. And I come from the Oglala Lakota Nation in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. I'm also a minister of social justice and advocacy for children, youth, and family ministry at Northeast Minneapolis Church uh, Nativity Lutheran Church. Um, and as well as a, a third year PhD student at Luther Seminary. As a Native American and an activist, I know firsthand the harm that well-intentioned people of faith can do when they come in to help communities that have been marginalized or minoritized. I remember growing up on the reservation and being one of those children that my church today would go and goes to help in communities to lead Bible studies and vacation Bible schools to help paint, to build things. But I also remember what it was like in watching th these kind people leave and then never come back, never form a relationship, never ask about my story or the story of my people. And it really stuck with me. Um, over the years. I remember at Standing Rock and the protests in North Dakota about a group of well-intentioned people of faith that came to help and support. However, what many that came to help didn't see was that their own unintentional actions were creating more harm than good. And this deeper trauma that was created than the trauma that they were already there to try and address. And that is why I'm going to share my story of trying to help my colleagues of faith of all traditions this summer and how I took my history, my story, I moved it forward to help heal the community. <laughs> when local pastors and religious leaders and spiritual care leaders, they stepped up this summer and they took the call to help communities here in St. Paul and Minneapolis. During the weeks and the, the days and the weeks following the murder of George Floyd, I don't think they knew what they were in for. The call was not just about needing volunteers with shovels and rubbish bags in hand and, and handing out food and other supplies. But this, this call for chaplains was very intentional. You see, as a team of rapid response organizers, we met to address the needs of the community during the uprising. And during that time in our conversations, my history, my stories, my experiences came to mind. And so I had to ask the question, how do we prepare a group of an intentional volunteers that can be culturally aware as, as, as well as spiritually ready to care for all people, regardless of their beliefs and understanding trauma? And how do we bring healing in a ministry of just being, a ministry of presence? So... The call was made and people responded. And, and I began with about four or five Zoom trainings a day that talked about how to be culturally aware, how about understanding your actions, understanding the trauma that many ethnic people were already coming in with. What is it like to care for people in the midst of a large crisis such as this? And most importantly, Nonviolent communication for our volunteers in the midst of a crisis. Because we saw it all this summer. We saw, we saw grief and trauma and pain playing out in front of us. People's happy, people were happy, people were sad, people were angry. But this was the time to be able to let them express that and just be there for them. I think I helped put these chaplains together for a reason. 
because I still carry some of that trauma from the experiences of so many coming to try and help, whether it was my community when I was a child or my indigenous community just a few years ago. The chaplains, you know, I think our, our calming presence is felt because to this day, we still are helping out in the communities in different ways. And, and their aid was sought in to help other volunteers understand their actions. And it, and it took some time. And I remember sitting and listening to these two children that kind of came up. I would say they were probably about five, six, seven years old. And I didn't speak a lot of English. Uh, and they came to donate and they donated a banana and a couple of apples. And, and we just so happened to be uh, giving out some pizza that was donated uh, by someone in the community uh, to the people in the neighborhood we were at in Minneapolis. And there were no parents around. Uh, so I sat down and they sat with me and we talked. And at first we just kind of um, looked around and because they were so busy looking at everybody. And then eventually a couple of other children came. Unfortunately, we didn't have any pizza left, but they sat with me. And I remember sitting on this grass and these kids were around. And the brother and sister started talking. And they talked about the night before uh, th they were in their house and it was in the middle of their night and the mo their mother woke them up and it was just the three of them. And they were watching outside their home, um, the mother was, and, and there was a lot of stuff happening outside their home. And, and, and the little boy really wanted to peek. And eventually he did. And what he said was that there were uh, people coming. These There were two, two people that were collecting uh, garbage or things from the areas in their, around their neighborhood. And they were around their house. And they were trying to start a fire in front of their house. And it scared these little kids so much. And it was kind of in that moment that I realized the importance of letting everyone tell their story and the healing that it bring. Because I don't know that, that the mom even knew the child was able to take a peek and to see what was happening. She tried so hard to protect him. And the father was out trying to protect the neighborhood with, along with other neighbors in the area. And they were alone that day because their parents were out helping, trying to keep their neighborhood safe. But the children knew there was something so much bigger than them happening. That all this time when we were helping to be this calm and peaceful presence as chaplains, I forgot about the children and I forgot about the youth. And it was heartbreaking at first. But then I was reminded of, of how much the presence of our children is so important in these kind of conversations. That through the midst of the scariness that this child endured and, and saw in his neighborhood and the fires, the buildings burning and the people yelling and crying. He saw people coming together. He saw that he wanted to help and they brought what they could find in their house. And then they thanked, they thanked us for the pizza um, when we played a game. It was something maybe simple for them, um, but it, 
for me is something that really stuck with me. Because how often do we go into a situation when we want to volunteer, when we want to help? Do we actually, one, get permission to be in that space? There were a lot of spaces where, at the time, if the chaplains weren't invited, we don't show up. Or when we go, we always assume that we know and we can help better. We can bring our gifts that we are given in, in whether it's an organizing or whatever it is to make a better place for people. And we can. But too often we come in trying to fix when sometimes people just need to talk. That when we're serving a meal for someone, we're not just making sure, oh, you can have one piece of pizza or you can have one um, bit of toilet paper and one of this and one of that. But that we pay attention to the people that we're helping. That we give them an opportunity if they want to tell their story. Because our stories are sacred. And our stories that I have learned in my upbringing from my elders are an important part of healing. We need to be able to tell those stories and we need to be able to let people tell their stories. I often heard a lot about from the, the chaplains, a lot of chaplains, like, I feel like I'm not doing anything, but you are. It's, a, it's about that ministry of presence. Sometimes there's a time to, to speak up and to make our, our voices heard. And then there are other times when we need to be silent and give up that power so that someone else's voice can be heard. It's amazing how what we think is too hard to do or is too simple is really the thing that needs to bring in that healing. So I'm grateful for the presence of the village that I am surrounded by in my life of people because they continue to help me learn how to bring healing into the community, but learn sometimes when I need to step back, even as a person of color. It's important for me going into other communities of color that I, I am not trying to change them. I'm trying to walk with them and to hear them and to create the world really that I want my son to grow up in. So before you send out your volunteers to help in your communities, find someone to lead in cultural awareness so that you are not unintentionally creating a space that is dehumanizing to those who are helping, but that you are creating a space that is empowering and comforting 